today's project diary, I will teach you how to grow squash, pumpkins, melons or cucumbers vertically. Hi guys and welcome to Project Diaries. In today's video, I want to teach you how to grow squash vertically. Now this technique can work for squash, melons, cucumbers. There's so many different things you can grow vertically. Uh, but today I want to show you the squash. Uh, now this has been asked for by so many different people and it's a fairly easy technique. So I will add a little bit more into this video today. Uh, but if you haven't seen these ones already, I suggest you go back and watch this video. This will teach you how to grow squash from seed and get you up to the point where today's video starts. And I'd also suggest you watch in this video, this will help you uh, build a trellis because if you're growing vertically, you really want to get a, a really strong heavy duty trellis that's not going to snap under the weight of the plants because they can get quite heavy. And again, I will show you that later on. So in today's video, let's grow some squash vertically. So here's an example of the trellis that I've made. I've used plastic PVC piping all the way up through the top to give me the frame and then I've used this string I've done 12 inches that's a foot per space and this matches in with my square foot garden I've just twisted it round to give it more support uh, and then I've basically done that all the way down to the bottom and you need to use some really sturdy string as well uh, and then I just attach it down here with a little metal hook why would have been a better option but as I'm doing all this for free this is just what I had around the house uh, so that's going to give me real good structure and support. You really need to make this as sturdy as possible because the weight of these plants could pull anything down if it's a little bit flimsy. So I've just done that all the way through. So let's go on to the plants. So here are the plants a few weeks after where we left off from the growing the squash video. Uh, so as you can see, they want to trail across the floor, but I'm just going to train them up here. Now I'm going to plait them through this uh, trellis string. Uh, now I'm going to do one in the front and one in the back, and that's just going to plait through as it grows. But uh, don't be too impatient with this. So here they are a few weeks later, and it's been really good to have so much rain, but really bad that this is now encouraging a lot of slugs and snails. There is a slight bit of damage here, but I'm controlling them in the best way that I can. But as you can see, there's a few flowers forming already. So I've zigzagged all the way through from uh, the front to the back, and with the second um, plant I've done back to front. So it kind of makes this plait pattern. Uh, and it seems to be going really well at the moment. There's loads of new growth, and the greenery is fantastic. And as you can see, the trellis is really under some kind of pressure as well at the moment. This string's quite taut. Um, so it's really good idea to make sure that your trellis can hold quite a lot of weight But there's some flowers coming already, so I'm really happy so far So another week later and the weather has changed for the worst This wind is really putting this trellis through its paces, but the plants seem to be okay It's really holding up uh, But we've had quite a lot of damage from some of the other parts of the garden because of all this wind Now if a few of your leaves are damaged or start turning yellow like this, you can just cut them off. It's quite easy but this could be a significant sign that you have low nitrogen in your soil. If you do get quite a lot of yellow, then it could be a nitrogen problem, but I'm, I'm not gonna be too worried at this point because there are some really big leaves and it's still producing lots of flowers. So there should be enough nutrients in the soil. If it is a nutrition problem, here's a link to all of my organic fertilizers and feeds. I particularly like the banana fertilizer, so check those out. It's a good idea to give your plant a good boost of potassium and phosphorus. This will help it produce lots of good fruit. Now if your plants are producing lots of leafy greens but no flowers, it could be the fact that your nitrogen is too high. So you need to fix that. It could be the same thing with your tomato plants. If they're producing loads of leafy greens and no fruit, it could be the nitrogen problem. So here they are another week on, but I haven't managed to get to granddad's much this week. So they are growing quite long, but I'm just going to pull them back in and start the weaving process one more time. This leaf here has grown a natural hook, so I'm just gonna hook that over there and hopefully that'll hold on and the wind will really die down because that's causing lots of problems this year. You can see that my runner beans are really benefiting from this trellis as well and they're growing really well. So if you wanna know how to grow those, the link is on the screen now. Also, if you've got lots of foliage that are damaged, you may also get powdery white mildew. So here's a link on how to fix that. This young flower is also producing a tendril. These little stringy things will actually reach out and start hanging onto the trellis later on once it starts maturing. Here's a great example of what a mature tendril does. It's as strong as a guitar string. And as you can see, it's giving the plant loads more stability now. And thankfully the wind has started to die down so the flowers aren't getting knocked off anymore and it's producing some really lovely fruit. 
So in the earlier stages of this plant you can use ties or clips so I'll leave some links in the description box below but I'm extremely happy with what's going on so far. Now if your plants are only producing male flowers don't worry at this stage. They will only produce male flowers at the first part and 10 days later they'll start producing the female flowers. The reason why it's producing so many males is to attract all the pollinators, the bees, the hoverflies and things like that and then you'll be able to get the fruit from the female flowers. So don't worry too much if you just start seeing male flowers. So to tell the difference between a male and a female flower is the males always have this really long stem and the female flowers will have a short bulbous lump at the bottom underneath the flower. So if these younger tendrils aren't attaching to anything at the moment it's a good idea to give it a nice help. So all you need to do is just find a nice sturdy part of the trellis and twist it around to give it a hand. Now it's a lot easier to do this with two hands but as I'm filming it's going to be a slightly tricky but all you need to do is just wind the springy part around the trellis and this will really help it give it more stability. Be careful not to break them at this point because these are vital for allowing this plant to grow vertically. This will allow the foliage to pull away from other sections of the plant and reduce diseases or things like powdery white mildew. Now I'm absolutely fascinated on how nature works. It's almost like these plants want to grow vertically. And like I say, growing squash, pumpkins, melons and cucumbers can all be grown this way and this allows you to grow so much more crops in a small space. So it's always a good idea to keep a tidy house. So if you start seeing really old dead leaves or yellowing leaves, it's a good idea to clip them off. You can use whatever cutting tools you prefer and you just want to go in to as close as you can to the main stem. Now again this is going to be really tricky me filming and cutting at the same time but you just want to get it as close to the main stem as possible. You also want to make sure that these tools haven't been used on any diseased plants such as the roses with uh, black spot or anything like that in order to not spread any more diseases around your garden. Now as long as these leaves don't show any signs of mildew or disease you can add them back into your compost and create that cycle. This one's twisted in so well one of the tendrils is actually stuck around it so uh, it's doing a really good job. This is how it's naturally supposed to hold on to the trellis so uh, well done. <laughs> but again try and be really delicate with this you don't want to try and break these tendrils at all because again it does really need to use these tendrils to hold on and keep stability. Cutting these leaves off will also allow the pollinators to see the flowers a lot easier and give them a lot better access and hopefully produce loads more fruit once they start flowering properly. So the plant is still producing loads and loads of male flowers and not much fruit at the moment but I'm really hoping that these are going to come through female so I'm not really worried. I'm just going to keep watering it and feeding it and giving it some TLC and uh, we've had a bit more wind again so I'm just going to show you here this was one of the flowers that got knocked off but it's still not dead yet what you can do is actually use this stem here and this is where all the pollen is you can then use this to then pollinate female flowers and really boost your yield so again it's really tricky to do with one hand so uh, hang on give me a second okay so it's this point here this little stem uh, middle part has got all of the pollen uh, that you need to then start pollinating female flowers. Now again I'm not going to talk to you about the birds and bees uh, but it's really easy to do once you start seeing uh, the female flower obviously this one's a male flower um, but when you see, once you see a female flower with the bulbous po point at the bottom uh, you can then move this part around the inside of the female's flower this is awkward <laughs> and then it will help you pollinate your other flowers uh, like this and uh, yeah uh, but this is awkward. <laughs> what I'll do is once I start getting more female flowers I'll do that in a separate video but uh, from today I think that's enough. This plant is looking beautiful, it's looking really healthy and it's producing loads of flowers. So uh, that's pretty much how you grow uh, squash vertically and if your plant grows too tall you can either weed it back in so it grows back down or cut the top off. Well that's enough from me today. If you like this video don't forget to give it a thumbs up and click the subscribe button. My next lot of videos will be hopefully pollinating the female flowers and also looking out for something called blossom end rot. You can see here it's starting to produce some amazing fruit but that's enough from me. Look after yourself, happy growing and I'll see you again next time. 
you'd like to keep up to date on all of my future releases, click the subscribe button here. Here are some links to some of my other videos. And if you've tried this or any other project, I'd love to see your progress, so please join my Facebook gardening group where thousands of people are sharing photos and ideas daily. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you again next time.